I'm Dini Sewanji Rajakarna, Special Language Therapist, graduated from Faculty of Medicine, Ragama, University of Kalania. My research was to study to determine factors considered by Special Language Therapist in decision making for oral versus non oral feeding in acute post stroke patients. As you all know, dysphagia is a swallowing disorder which occurs secondary to neurological lesions and uh, it can occur in four stages pre oral, oral. Is, uh, uh, pharyngeal and esophageal stages. Clinically, dysphagia decision making takes a significant role in oral versus non oral feeding in acute post stroke patients. So, uh, uh, this, uh, my uh, aim was to identify assessment methods and uh, their findings and uh, clinical uh, challenges in uh, clinical practice. Uh, that are predominantly considered by speech and language therapists in deciding between oral and non-oral feeding for acute post-stroke patients. Uh, there, were, uh, there, there have been no research studies regarding speech and language therapist common practices in decision making for oral versus non-oral feeding recommendations. So, uh, uh, to make similar decision for uh, oral versus non-oral feeding, currently there have been no clinical guidelines available in Sri Lanka. Uh, this is a term may lead to variation in uh, decision uh, variation in uh, clinical decision making. The invest uh, uh, this is the um, and uh, uh, to determine. Uh, uh, oral versus non-oral feeding. Uh, that is the reason uh, I did uh, this uh, research. Then uh, under the methodology part, uh, this was a mixed method study and uh, self-administered questionnaire was used to collect both quantitative and qualitative data. And uh, there were 30 special language therapists uh, participated for this. And uh, data were analyzed by using quantitative uh, quantitative part, SPSS uh, 22 version, and qualitative part, thematic analysis. Under the results section, uh, participant, were, uh, participant responses were thematically analyzed. Uh, so lack of uh, caregiver support, lack of uh, uh, professional awareness, lack of instrumental resources identified as the challenges in clinical practices. Identification of assessment method used to uh, prior to deciding the mood of nutritional intake. Uh, all the participants 30 indicated that uh, conventional bedside mode assessment as a primary decision making procedure, and 21 participants opted uh, for the simultaneous use of instrumental technique and uh, bedside assessment. Assessment related factors that are considered when making oral versus non oral decision. Uh, participants were instructed to select uh, 10 factors that are predominantly considered by uh, oral versus non oral feeding. So um, there were 46 factors. Uh, among them, they had to uh, select 10 factors uh, uh, according to the uh, questionnaire. Then uh, table one included uh, frequency analysis of all the factors and uh, rank in order of their selection. Alertness was a factor that was uh, ranked in highest and other factors in an ascending order of uh, ranking work of ability, history of pneumonia, ability to complete posture, oral motor control, silent aspiration, frequency of aspiration, secretion management, awareness and nutritional status. Conclusion, lack of the instrumental resources and uh, lack of caregiver support, lack of professional awareness uh, are the uh, most uh, prominent challenges faced by speech and language therapist. And uh, bedside assessment is the most common assessment method. And uh, the most important 10 factors that are predominantly considered by speech and language therapist uh, in this decision making for oral versus non oral feeding in acute post stroke patients. Thank you.